getting ready to show you guys a video on the personalized toilet paper that I'm making for Mother's Day. The product that I'm spraying on that toilet paper is called Dipress. Um, Dipress is a chemical, uh, and I really, the only way I'm going to tell you to find it is just Google Dipress. Maybe Dipress for sublimation. I believe it's D-Y-E-P-R-E-S-S. -S. It's supposed to be a two-part chemical, and the way it's supposed to work is it's supposed to let you sublimate on cotton t-shirts. I've never been able to get it to work right. I've talked to some crafting ladies that use it, that love it, and I asked them what their secret was. They told me that you really had to let it dry. You know, you had to get it completely dry. So I dried some under uh, shirt presses, and it sublimated it looked beautiful in 50-50s because I was like, man, this is the answer to my prayers, to be able to sublimate on 50-50 shirts. They looked fantastic until they was washed and dried. And then it looked like they was never, uh, never had anything put on them. So it's been sitting around my shop uh, forever. And uh, Michael Kaminsky does a video where he uses a product he sells with a polymer powder. And that's how they pressed on toilet paper. And I have some of that. I bought it from Michael years and years and years ago. I used it on a couple shirts. And it's very kind of rubbery feeling, which is why I never uh, used much of it again. It's been hanging up there. So I came in this morning with the intention of using that. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if die press will work. So I tried it, and it did work. And it's it, to me, it's easier than having to fool with that powder. Plus, that both products are just sitting right here in my shop. But I'm never going to use that die press for shirts. So if you're one of those people who love die press, hey, man, tell me how, what's your secret, because I can't ever get it to work. Uh, but it worked great on the toilet paper. So that's what the product is, die press. And uh, I'm not even sure where you can buy it. But you can buy it. It's there. You can even buy it on Amazon, I think. But uh, it's, I think it's two parts and you mix them together. I don't remember. Mine's already pre-mixed. It's been in the jug hanging in the shop forever. So, um, anyways, that's that's the, the story on that press. All right. So, this is how we prep our toilet paper. I get six sheets. And you want to make sure if you've got any bad ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. Get rid of those. If they've got any imperfections in them. Three. I've been doing about three of these at a time. It seems to be working out pretty well. Because I don't want them touching while they're very wet. They'll be sticking together. And, and they don't take very long, so it's not a big deal. So I'm going to lay them so that my three sheets on the end are right there. And I'm going to leave a little space right there for my spacer. So there's all three pieces. I've got my die press in this cup. I'm using a regular sprayer. Make sure you clean your sprayer out. Okay, so these are going to get pretty wet. Don't freak out. You can see I've got my Teflon cover on my press. I didn't want to get all this junk on the actual plat. I get them pretty wet with die press. And spray your die press out of your sprayer. And it's a good idea to run some alcohol through this or some really hot water. It's already got some junk on the screen, but you want to keep that clean or it won't spray even. Now, I've got a big, ooh, it's still hot. I've got a big chunk of metal that's off of something. Um, that I'm just using as a spacer. So I just set that there, and then I can just drop my platen down on that spacer so it'll dry. You can adjust the press, of course, um, so that it hovers, um, but I just had that chunk of metal so I can lay it in there, drop this down, and it's not touching the toilet paper. It takes about seven, eight minutes to, to get that dry. As wet as that is, you'll still be amazed at how dry it gets. And then uh, once it comes out of there, I'll press it just for about 10 or 15 seconds to make it flat again. And that almost made three. So these are pretty dry. You see they're wrinkled. Real wrinkled. So I'm going to just flat press them. 
for about 10 seconds. That one I might just throw away. And flat press them one more time. Put one more pressure on there. Sorry, I'm holding this camera myself. Mm. Not too much heat. Oops. Whoa. Looks like we got a stage four clinger. So this one is now trash. Uh, these are straight enough, I think. Okay. So all I do is lay these all in one position. Okay. So that I know which end is my main end, which end is my roll end. You see these getting a little brown. But if they get too much heat, They'll, they'll yellow on you a little bit. It won't matter as much when you press the colors on them and then get them wrapped up. But I'd probably let that dry a little too long. See, all of those are ready to go. My cameraman is back from a ribbon run. So you guys won't have to stare at walls and like the gal I'm just going to show you pressing one of these really fast. So I'm just going to cut it out as square as I can on the paper cutter. That should be pretty good. <clears throat> so here's our pre-done strips. So these are already uh, die pressed, and dry, ready to go. Lay them on the press. This is pretty standard stuff. I leave a little on the end. I'm going to give it a press of 375. Uh, I'm probably going to let it go about 45 or 50 seconds instead of a minute. So I'll just kind of watch the timer. And then when I get done, I'm going to attach this to the rolls. I know a lot of people will make these on the roll. And you can totally do that. I just wanted to be able to pre-make a bunch of these with the die press. Um, and I figured out a really easy way to reattach them to rolls. So we'll be using our uh, ba uh, basting or basting spray uh, to do it. I'm going to show you how simple it is. So if you've got a row, if it's got too much on it, you can take some of that off. I've been doing that, using these for the die press pieces. If you want to make it a little smaller. There's nine seconds left on there. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So now what we do, take our toilet paper roll, we put a dab of our basting spray on there. And then just line up this end and attach it. Perfect. Now put a little pressure on the row as you pull it around. Make sure you're keeping everything pretty lined up. Keep it pretty tight. And then when you get around to this end, Give it a little snug. I pull this back. Another little shot of glue. 
Let go. Now it's ready for to be put in cellophane and have ribbons put on it. And you got a pretty super awesome little gift.